Hello everyone, my name is Brandon, 17 years old, and I'm sure that you're all aware of this pandemic that has been going on on a global scale. We've all heard of this mambo jumbo about the apocalypse, about this disease that would spread all around the world, but like, this is happening right now. Like, like listen to this. Italy's coronavirus death toll surges past 2.5 thousand. UK cases of coronavirus is about 1.9 thousand. Canada has about 430 cases, the US about 4.2 thousand, between that or 5.6 thousand. In China there have been about 80.80 thousand cases as well as 3.2 thousand deaths. This adds up to about 190 thousand cases when you put it on a global scale with all the cases worldwide and this was like an extremely short list that I just gave. There's no words I can put to describe how much this has affected families and communities even here where I live. I'm an extremely spiritual person and so when I see nonsense going on in the world like this I try to find a reflection within myself on like what lesson I can take from this. And so I wanted to share with you all as believers what lessons we can take from the coronavirus even if you're not a believer or Christian like I respect all religions, so still stay in tune for the end and you might get something out of this message. Surely has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we counted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. In the greatness of his love, he wants to pour out his forgiveness on the whole world, yet in his justice there is a due consequence for our sin. So he became that victim to have the entirety of the greater consequence on himself, on the cross. And in his glorious resurrection, he took the victory for us over that grave, this struggle of our, the depression, anxiety, the infirmities and diseases, the pandemics. He took that victory and that is why he says in the scriptures of our great teaching, I was dead and see I am alive forever and ever and I have the keys to Hades and death because he took that victory in the resurrection, conquering the grave which symbolized all of our faults. Regardless of how bad this pandemic gets or even if it were like a war or tribulation, we know that Christ has already won the victory. Sure, you know, till the last day on earth, there will be injustice. And you know, we are called to fight for justice in this life. But as long as this world is a thing, you know, there will be a struggle between justice and injustice. It's just the way the world works. But we know that at the end, all things will be completed for a greater good. That end, at the end, the victory has already been taken by Christ for the greater redemption, for the better good. So we have nothing to fear, because even if this pandemic got to the point where a half of the population were to die of it, or you know, if it were a war or tribulation instead, like regardless of what the struggle is in the world, we know that at the end, when it is all completed, the greater good has already been taken by the victory of Christ. It has already been won for us, and we have nothing to fear on this behalf. Like look at the early church, they were persecuted, brutally assaulted by the Roman Empire, yet they had the confidence to know that they have already won the victory over the struggle in daily life by the victory that Christ has taken through the resurrection, and that these evildoers who fight for injustice against minorities and hating on peoples of different cultures and religions, Justice has already been served, and they have already received the punishment due for their action. And that is where in another scripture of the great teachings of our beautiful faith, it says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fear has not reached perfection in love. You see, to be afraid of this coronavirus, is to really feel that it has already taken a victory over humanity. But we know that at the end, the greater good has already been won 
by that victory taken by Christ through his crucifixion and resurrection. So there has, there's nothing for us to fear as Christians. I respect all religions, so even if you're not a believer or Christian, I hope that there was something that you could have taken out of this because, you know, all cultures offer a truth for humanity and we should respect one each other as individuals. So I hope that even if you're not a Christian or believer in general, that there is a lesson you can still take to benefit yourself out of this video. And so it was a great reminder and indeed an act of mercy for God to urge us to turn back to him, to seek after his mercy and forgiveness. And so that's the beauty of suffering. And you know, there's good and bad in everything, even in the good and bad of itself. And so that's the good that is taken out of suffering. Though it seems so evil, and you know, I've su suffered quite a lot. I know it might sound like I'm exaggerating, but trust me, I have. And if you only knew. And so this reality of suffering, there is a beauty if you look deep enough in it, and that is that it reminds one of the reality that there is a consequence for sin, yet this is only a little glimpse of hell, and this is not the punishment of itself. And so it is a grace that we're not in hell, that we're not suffering in the spiritual world, but rather in this life instead, so that we understand what is to come if we do sin. And so we take advantage of this to search after the forgiveness and mercy of God. And that's the beauty and the lesson taken out of this coronavirus as believers. There's something wrong in the society of today. People look out in the world for a purpose, to find self-love, but then so they feel dr dry inside, and a growth of self-hate and depression begins in the heart, and I'm saying this based on my own experience, because this is your center. That's not who you are. That's the outside world. It's good. Don't get me wrong, but you're not going to find self-love out there that lasts forever, because you're only going to find it in yourself. And so you need to get rid of that materialistic falsehoods and improve yourself on spirituality. And that's the only way we find in their enlightenment, self-love, and to truly find true happiness through truly seeking out the forgiveness and mercy of God, because then his light is poured out within us. So I dare you, I dare all of you listening right now to share this video with three people you may feel like oh i don't want to be judged or anything but be honest with yourself if we don't express what we believe in as people of culture and faith people who aren't of us speak about us in a bigoted misguiding way spreading misconceptions and so that's why it matters for us to speak up on what we believe in and so i dare you to share this video with three people and of course share it out of love there's so much i want to share on this issue and I just want to talk endlessly about it but I feel like I just need to keep my message simple to put it out there to touch someone's heart today so I hope that someone out there has been touched by this message and just you know take this to heart I beg all of you because this is the vital message for each of us in this life and anyways that's gonna be it for now so I thank you all for watching so much uh, I appreciate all the support by the way and that's all I have to say for now, so I'll see you all in my next video. Ave Maria. I walked in my room, right, and like, I look on my bed, and there's literally this mountain of kitty marshmallows. There's Pippi, there's Pop, uh, ew, he's eating his fingers, I don't want to show that. There's Shadow, and uh, yeah, it, it was just really adorable, so I had to include this in the little vlog thing, so, uh, smash like.